Mr. Per Christian Henningsweg from Microsoft. Thank you so much. So first of all, thank you so much, Unicorn, for uh, the partnership and, and also for the great agenda in this event today and also for letting me be part of it. And, and also thank you for attending the session, uh, all of you that is out there. So um, correctly, my name is Per Christian Honningsvog um, and I lead the Microsoft's um, global efforts towards the power and utilities industry. And then I'm, um, I would say I'm fortunate in my role to have the opportunity to, uh, to stay in touch with power and utilities companies across, uh, across the globe, uh, to really to witness and, and also to contribute to uh, all the great innovation in the space. Um, and it's really the intersection between um, energy and IT, or I should perhaps in this session say energy and cloud technology that really excites me. Um, and also the, the importance that one plays um, for the other. So this intersection is uh, what I will spend the next uh, 15, 20 minutes on, um, a bit of a storytelling around it and uh, land it a bit more cor um, concretely at, at the end of the session. So bear with me. As we all gr uh, agree, energy is, is, uh, is a key enabler um, for us to live our lives. It's powering our schools, hospitals, transportation, communication, heating and cooling our homes. And it's really activating also industries that are producing goods and services that are key uh, to the way um, we are living today. And the amount of energy is not um, the, the challenge. Uh, the amount of energy that we are surrounded with, um, that, that is more than we need. In fact, if we could capture and store the energy reaching the Earth uh, from the sun only for a short period, minutes, not hours, uh, we would have enough energy to power humanity and the world's energy needs uh, for an entire year. And as we are not up for that challenge yet, we are all of us together on this journey, targeting improved ways um, to power a world in a more sustainable way. And this is not a small task. So basically human activities are responsible for almost all the increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere over the last 150 years. Greenhouse gases associated with energy production and consumption accounts for 70-80% um, of, of the emissions and greenhouse gases associated with the heat and electricity generation um, accounts for, for close to 30%, with of course big variations across the world. So with this legacy, action to accelerate transition to clean energy, as we are here for, uh, is also climate action, which is a global issue that requires a global response. And energy or, or clean and affordable energy is just one of the big challenges in the 17 um, sustainability development goals, but it's also one that really can accelerate our progress in reaching other goals like sustainable cities. Let me first take a, a, a quick look at a game changer um, to, uh, I mean, for the modern world, uh, what really changed um, the way of living and boosted economic growth, namely electricity, or in fact, the mass adoption of uh, electricity. So in 1892, Samuel Insull became the CEO of the struggling Chicago Edison Company. Within a few years, he turned the company around. In fact, he turned the whole energy sector around, which affected so many other industries as well. Why? Well, by cracking the code of mass adoption of electricity. The way that he did that was by building new disruptive technologies to generate power to a lower cost in larger power plants than the world had ever seen before. Secondly, he adopted technology to transmit electricity longer distances, and by that serving much larger market than so far achieved. And thirdly, he changed basically how electricity was priced in the market to a time of use rate to encourage customers to smooth out their usage, and by that running his power generation assets closer to uh, its maximum capacities. So, Insol truly understood the disruptive power of the combination of new technologies, scale and business models. Even though it can be hard to directly attribute improvements in living standards back to a single factor, it has long been evident that economic growth and energy demand is linked. Gaining access to electricity provide an, in an increase in GDP, 
while at the same time having a high GDP may in return drive a higher energy consumption, at least to a certain point. Because what happened in the US from the mid-90s was that the link got decoupled and GDP grew twice as fast as electricity demand. A similar decoupling happened in many uh, regions globally around 2005. At this point, economic growth was affected by another change, like shifting uh, from a, um, an industrial to a service economy. And during the same time period, a significant investment went into technology innovation. While electricity was a currency of the 20th century, another currency has taken over as the currency of the 21st century, namely data and the new technologies, perhaps best represented by artificial intelligence. It's already driving innovation across all sectors and transforming societies. Technology and data are adding productivity gains and boosting economic growth. Microsoft, as one example, applied AI or deep reinforcement learning to our um, HVAC system schedules at our main campus in Redmond, Seattle. Um, and where we have approximately 150 buildings, we, we ran that AI engine for just two weeks. And based on that, we achieved 15% energy consumption reduction by changing the system schedules. And in asset heavy industries like power and utilities, ABB is transforming the workforce management with applied AI and increasing field productivity by 15 to 25% and improving customer satisfaction by 20%. And in the downstream, in the customer care side of the power and utilities industry, EY is applying AI to virtual customer care conversations, reducing in the US calls from um, $14 to $1. Data and AI as currencies of the 21st century is adding economic growth and the technology sector uh, as a percentage of global GDP has been forecasted to, to increase from 5 to 10 percent over the next decade. And the current pandemic has even accelerated these long term trends. So what is it that, that is really driving and delivering technologies like artificial intelligence. Well, that, that's the disruptive new technology services delivered by hyperscale data centers across the globe with cost cutting price models, which can be tuned up and down depending on your need for compute and um, processing capacity. It's scale and availab uh, availability deliver unprecedented computing and it's designed with a strong principles for compliance and trust, ensuring that your data is secure. So Microsoft alone is investing more than $1 billion in cybersecurity annually. And leveraging the network effect, these data centers are built under more or less the same principles as introduced um, with Samuel Insull, benefiting from economy of scale. And the disruptive power of new technologies, scale and business model has again proven to be a successful recipe and the mass adoption of these cloud technologies is already here. The energy usage of these data centers is at such levels that it requires a partnership between the energy sector and the data center industry. Microsoft as a hyperscale public cloud provider is also one of the most ambitious companies globally with its uh, sustainability goals, which really starts with our data centers and the energy they require. So Microsoft has been carbon neutral since 2012, uh, and we have been very active in the market uh, last uh, several years with corporate power purchase agreement for renewables like solar and wind. Last year, we announced that Microsoft will be carbon negative by 2030. This means that we will reduce our emissions by more than half across our entire business, including our supply chain. We will remove carbon, more carbon than we have ever uh, emitted annually as a company, resulting in a carbon impact that is below zero. While all industries should act according to the sustainability development goals, we believe um, those who can afford it should move faster. This is also why we last year announced that by 2050, 
our goal is to remove from the environment all the carbon Microsoft has ever emitted either directly or through electricity consumption since our company was founded in 1975. Reaching these goals require a new technology to be, de uh, to be developed and built. Therefore, we also announced a $1 billion climate investment fund, which is set up to accelerate the global development of carbon reduction, capture and removal technologies. In July um, last year, we, we also announced that we will join Energy Impact Partners, along with several utilities and energy companies, which is a global investment platform leading the transition to a sustainable energy future. As these data centers um, are grid connected, we explore many collaboration models with the, the energy markets and the remaining value chain of the power grid. In many regions, the grid uh, must still use fossil fuel generators to back up renewables energy. Data centers can fill gaps from the intermittency of renewables, uh, acting as participants in, in areas like local energy grid balancing. This can affect the, uh, the, the needed grid investments for the local utility, saving money, reduce carbon footprint of the overall grid. Steps like implementing grid interactive UPS batteries make a big difference in our way to reduce our carbon footprint with our operations. We recently had also a successful pilot using hydrogen fuel cells for backup power um, at our data centers. How successful we as Microsoft are in, be, uh, in, in running cloud services with minimized carbon footprint is also affecting how our customers are reaching their carbon targets. This is why we last year announced a sustainability calculator where customers can see carbon footprint associate, associated with their cloud services or the cloud services they are running in the Microsoft Cloud. Microsoft strives to provide our data center customers five nines of service availability, which means that the data center is operational 99.99% of the time. The grid company's operations to keep power distribution reliable and resilient is something we pay a great attention to, both as a customer of the utilities, but also as a business partner to the power and utilities industry. Because while being grid connected, it is for me very interesting to see how the grid is benefiting from the technology that is running in the cloud, and also how that helps the utility deliver a reliable and resilient service back to us as a data center operator. One example is how artificial intelligence is helping utilities across the world to quicker also restore their grids after disasters like hurricanes or, or wildfires. Gridline inspections has been on the top 10 most dangerous jobs in the US and by leveraging drones and AI, the inspections can be done quicker and faster. Um, when Hurricane Irma struck Florida back in 2017, it took 10 days to restore power and light, as opposed to the 18 days needed to recover from a previous hurricane, Wilma. This was due to the adoption of AI-optimized decision-making. An AI-based image analysis is being done up to 1,000 times faster and it detects up to four times as many defects than, than existing ground-based inspections. This truly improves the maintenance workflows for grid companies. And the same AI is also being trained to fly uh, wind turbine blades and look for and monitor anomalies over time. Uh, with a precision of one by three millimeters and, the, um, and reduce both time and costs for uh, data collection by 60%. The partnership uh, between energy companies and the tech industry is helping also other industries reach their sustainability goals. Statscraft delivered an, uh, a, a great presentation on 24-7 earlier today by connecting both to renewables generation data and also end customer consumption data, energy companies can now provide their customers with 24 seven hourly matching of renewables generation against their consumption. This improves, of course, how companies can track and report on their scope to emissions. We also see cloud being applied to areas of substantial business value that is not feasible without the use of public cloud infrastructure. 
this is uh, th this is the point where cloud becomes a truly an enabling platform leveraging performance and scale to deliver unprecedented outcomes examples uh, for this include both grid scale forecasting optimization automation and, and also simulation Energy companies are also reworking their business models to take a larger responsibility with their customers. By connecting to their customers' assets, both for electricity consumption and power generation like a rooftop solar, they can optimize the energy mix based on a priority to clean energy or, or pricing. Moving towards an energy as a service model, 76% uh, of the utilities think AI will be or will enable such new business models. It's also very inspiring to see true transformational change with some of the energy companies these days. A decade ago, Ørsted was one of the most fossil fuel intensive companies in Europe. In 2017, they decided to move away from coal and sold off their oil and gas business. Last year, they were actually ranked as the most sustainable company in the world. And on this journey, they have had a very strong strategy to leverage cloud technology to accelerate the transition to renewables energy. Industry collaboration also helps accelerate innovation in this space. Energinet, the Danish TSO, um, was back in 2013 and launching their first national data hub to simplify the integration between DSOs and suppliers. So basically it's simplifying the meter to cash process. We have worked together with Energinet uh, over the last few years on their third generation data hub, which now is being built in cloud. The scope of the new data hub is way beyond the meter to cash process. And this third generation data hub is built with an open source model, uh, together also in partnership with the, the Linux Foundation Energy. Um, and, and also Energinet as a, a, a TSO, they, they also would like to draw from and share knowledge with the, with the entire industry and support also new use cases, leveraging the data they collect and also the extended definition of the da uh, data hub to accelerate the green transition. So we have this joint opportunity together to really channel the intelligence from the edge to the cloud uh, into meanif meaningful outcomes. This incredible powerful technology is already here and it's up to us to lean in to design, to shape and to apply uh, its intelligence to maximize the global human experience at the same time minimizing the environmental footprint. So with that, um, we might or might not have time for a question, so I'll hand it um, back to the team. Uh, thank you very much for such a nice description, and I hope there will be questions, so uh, let's go on. Yeah, we have still some time for one or two questions. Uh, per Christian, thank you very much for being here with us today. It's a really great pleasure that such a high-positioned uh, gentleman from Microsoft could uh, hand over these uh, messages really from Microsoft about the commitments to, uh, to a greener future. Uh, I've heard you talking about the clouds, about the cloud technologies. It always resonates in two tones in my head. Uh, the first one is actually uh, the enabler, the infrastructure for uh, the software and IoT uh, providers, but even uh, the operators for the energy transition. The second one is, as you have actually already said, uh, the data centers could be very good a part of uh, of the energy markets as a source of the flexibility. So I think this is perfectly understood. Uh, what would be uh, of interest of mine actually is uh, when we hear those big goals about uh, Microsoft being committed to, uh, to these carbon neutrality goals, uh, what is the real impact in, in your company? Uh, how actually people are understanding these goals uh, because sometimes it's it's difficult, you know, to, to uh, absorb in the company these big goals. Uh, so, do you see any changes uh, personally in Microsoft uh, with regards to these goals? Yeah. For, first of all, we have had an internal carbon fee um, for 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 years. We have also been awarded for it. So we, but but now we are 
we're taking that to, that to the next uh, level as well. So we are, we are actually bringing carbon accountability down to a team level inside of Microsoft as well. And that is really kind of getting close to the employees as well. And this is being cherished by the employees because we have a very strong sustainability community inside of our company. But also uh, a, a few other things. I mean, uh, if we look at, um, I mean, like the, the scope one emissions, um, one thing that, that we will do as, as part of reaching that is, is kind of electrify our campus fleet by 2030. Everybody will, um, will, will see that and experience that as, um, as both employees and customers as well. And also more from a system perspective, we will uh, switch to diesel free data center backup generation by 2030 uh, as part of our scope, scope one um, pursuits. And, and obviously here we will look to, to color, collaboration with many of the innovators in the, in the company and, or in the industry to make this happen. Looking at scope two emissions, this is where we are also um, really paying uh, attention to the efficiency of our data centers and also the, uh, our real estate, basically our facilities. Um, so optimizing uh, from an efficiency perspective there. In addition, we have 100% renewables uh, targets by 2025 affecting uh, scope 2 as well and currently we are we are contracting more than one gigawatt of renewable energy year over year and the last one scope 3 uh, probably the toughest one right so um, we here we are working uh, with with kind of our supplier kind of co um, code of conduct we are um, basically looking into our entire value chain uh, and our value chain also includes how we as, as employees are traveling the world or not traveling the world, even how we are traveling to the office. Um, and th this goes kind of back to the, uh, to the accountability that we are putting on every uh, employer uh, at, at some point, uh, which is very encouraging uh, for, for most of us. And also the last thing I'll mention, uh, we also have kind of some interesting opportunities working together with our hardware platforms like our Xbox community, our Surface devices. How can we also leverage that reach into the into the consumption side of um, of, of the energy uh, energy market and really be part of also influencing and, and affecting that. And last thing I'll mention is is all about partnerships as well. And this is why. Um, they, I, I think through technology, we together have a, an incredible opportunity to reach um, cross-industry markets together. And this is also what I, what I appreciate with the collaboration with, with Unicorn here for sure. So many initiatives going on, many things to partner on. So exactly how it should be. So thank you.